Did you know in 2017 alone approximately 4,000 peer-reviewed papers focused on gut microbiota, which is the microflora that lives within our intestines? Remarkably, between 2013 and 2017, the number of publications focusing on gut microbiota was 12,900 papers. This represents four-fifths of the total number of publications over the last 40 years that investigated this topic. That is more than 80% of the overall publications of the last 40 years, since, since 1977. So we have talked about gut health here at The Whole Journey for well over a decade and have helped more than 12,000 people create powerful positive change in their gut health. We're going to put a link to all of our previous gut health shows if you love to learn about gut health as much as we love to talk about it. But today I want to discuss the newest, the latest, the greatest research in order to give you the 2019 Gut Health Report. News flash. New gut bacteria species have been discovered. European Bioinformatics Institute and the Wellcome Sanger Institute, both in the United Kingdom, used computational analysis to assess gut microbiome samples from participants across the globe. This study revealed more than 100 previously unknown gut species which have never been sequenced before. This is going to improve GI bacteria data by at least 50%. They studied 20 people from the UK and Canada. They took fecal samples and then they grew and DNA sequenced 737 strains of gut bacteria. The results showed 273 separate bacterial species, 173 of which would have never been sequenced before. And from that, this was shown that 105 species of bacteria have never been isolated, making them new to science. This means the microbiome testing scene is changing, you guys, because it's getting more accurate. And this new level of accuracy that should soon be reflected on testing should help advance human health tremendously. It's a big deal. Your gut flora, your diet, as well as your intestinal mucosal lining determine the health of your digestive system. Infections and viruses such as Epstein-Barr and shingles all can influence our gut microbiome tremendously. I really want you to understand that our health is not a snapshot of now, but rather our whole life. And gut health starts in preconception before you're even conceived based upon your mom and dad's gut health three months before their sperm or egg ever came together to make you. Our gut microbiome is dramatically impacted in childhood. So I want you to think back to the infections you may have been exposed to. Chicken pox, mono, strep throat, pneumonia, food poisoning, really any bacterial, fungal, parasitic, protozoa, or viral exposure that you've had in your life, or even Montezuma's revenge, you know, that one time you were traveling, let's say in Mexico. All of those things are currently impacting your adult gut health. It is not as simple as throwing some probiotics down the chute and making it all better. We must do a full five-step process rather than adding more bacteria into the mix because we have to turn over our entire genetic code. That's what the gut microbiome is, the collective genetic material of all of the species in that area and the only way to rejuvenate and revive the gut microbiome and to strengthen it is to turn over and strengthen the entire genetic code. Moving beyond the gut, we know that our body systems do not operate as islands, but they're all connected. And the gut, brain, and nervous system, they're almost one in terms of how interconnected the relationship is between them and how each one affects the other. We have a nerve, a nerve called the vagus nerve, which connects our gut and our brain and vice versa. And there was a new study published about this just in February 2019 out of Nature Microbiology and it looked at the microbiome of 1,054 people who had a diagnosis of depression in a gut flora project. This is exciting. Researchers were able to pinpoint certain groups of bacteria which influenced mental health. Two groups of bacteria in particular, Copernicus 
and dialaster, I don't know if I'm pronouncing those right, were consistently found to be at low numbers in people with depression. The enteric nervous system are the nerve cells that govern the gastrointestinal tract. And this nervous system is often referred to as our second brain because it's a group of neurons that communicate with our brain directly through the vagus nerve. Now what science once, once thought was a one-way channel where the brain communicates to the gut, we now know is a two-way street and the gut is constantly also signaling to the brain. Recent studies show that microorganisms have a role in this communication process and you can influence them and strengthen it. And now it makes sense, right, that our gut influences our thoughts, our mood, our choices, and even our behavior. We talk about this in our Gut Thrive program, the role that gut dysbiosis or leaky gut syndrome can have on our overall health, including mental and emotional health. And we have specific supplements that support reestablishing this two-way communication between the brain and the gut and the gut and the brain. It's like you're redoing the roadway so that it works again. And this is especially important, especially important for those with terrible inveterate constipation issues. You have to re-engage the brain and autonomic function to get peristalsis going again. So this newer research is really exciting for those people on SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or antidepressants, or even those who are on sedatives when what they're really struggling with is IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, irritable bowel disease, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If we can work synergistically on the gut as well as support the neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers in the brain, and the body-wide nervous system, then we can have lasting results in a completely different and more positive trajectory of your health. Now, antibiotics. I have to talk about them. This brings me to the newest research on antibiotics. There are times that we do need to go on antibiotics. They can literally be a lifesaver, but they are way overprescribed. The newest research says that nearly 25% of antibiotics prescribed in the United States are given for conditions they aren't meant to treat, and they aren't effective at treating. So we're killing our good gut bacteria. We're causing leaky gut for no reason. A new study finds in 2019, when antibiotics are given to children, it runs the risk of killing the good gut bacteria, which further adds to their risk for allergies, which have been on the rise steadily for the last 10 years, tenfold. Coincidence? I think not. Researchers are pointing the finger at the overuse of antibiotics. Lead researcher, Dr. Kao Ping Chua, he's an assistant professor of pediatrics at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He said that antibiotic prescribing is one of the major drivers of the development of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. And antibiotic resistance is a huge problem that is not only strengthening the bad bugs, it's creating super bugs. Check out these statistics. In 2016, amongst all outpatient antibiotic prescription fills by 19.2 million privately insured U.S. children and non-elderly adults, 23.2% of those antibiotic prescriptions were inappropriate. 35.5% were potentially appropriate. They weren't sure if they were gonna actually work. And 28.5% were not associated with a recent diagnosis code. The overprescribing and overuse of antibiotics is a major healthcare problem. It is causing a change in the microbes and the bacteria that support our health. And the overuse of antibiotics can cause certain bacteria to become resistant to even the most powerful antibiotics. You have heard that saying, when the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Well, it's high time we expand our collective toolkit and turn to the power of food as medicine. So what can we do? 
You can support your gut brain access, especially if you have GI symptoms, diarrhea, gas, bloating, constipation, abdominal pain. You can support this, especially if you struggle with anxiety, depression, low mood. It's essential to support the gut while working on the neurotransmitters and the nervous system all at the same time. And whenever antibiotics are being used to kill both the good and the bad bacteria, we will teach you how to repopulate your gut with the good bacteria and to seal up the damage to the gut lining that the antibiotics do. If you do have to use antibiotics, we recommend you concurrently take a multi-strain probiotic four hours after each antibiotic dose and continue to use probiotics for at least 14 to 21 days afterwards, along with a good leaky gut support formula for the same length of time. Do this every time you have to take antibiotics. Alternatively, use nature's antibiotics. Herbs such as oil of oregano, garlic, coconut oil, these are powerful natural antibiotics rather than jumping straight away to an antibiotic. You can make nature's flu shot. You can make fire cider to tackle bugs at the first sign of sickness. There you have it, the 2019 gut report with the newest research from the most cutting edge, peer reviewed, published papers. If this is of key interest to you, make sure you head over to the blog and check out that list of our most popular supportive gut health shows that will give you specific food as medicine action plans that you can trust. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.